this is an important work of history. I mean, because if you think about who are we going to remember in a hundred years, I mean, I genuinely think we're going to probably remember Elon Musk or, or Peter Thiel more than uh, Joe Biden. Um, or, <laughs> you know, honestly, I mean, if you think about the most important inventors from 100, 120 years ago, right, we care about Edison more than we care about Rutherford B. Hayes, right? Or Alexander yeah. Graham Bell, you know, compared to Chester Arthur. So I think we're going to remember, right. I think they'll remember Trump in 100 years. I think that story is too funny. And I think people will always, uh, I think people will always like sort of be referring to that. Like that was a very, very interesting time. I think Musk, you know, well, no offense to Biden, he's obviously important, but I think people will, will care about Elon Musk a hundred, 200 years uh, from now, a lot more than they care about him. Um, and, you know, it's, um, well, the, the speaking, I mean, speaking of like sort of the emotional reaction, my impression from the book is like, they're all pretty much, you know, I found very interesting. The time scale is very short. The time scale is like, you know, the the thing just, uh, they merge uh, Confinity and um, Axe. They merge in 1999, right? Like middle of 1999. They merge in early 2000, actually. It's a, it's a yeah. sort of, the, the, the technical date is like March 31st, but the merger is largely finalized by the middle, middle February of 2000. Right. So it's a, I mean, it's a very short thing. Like PayPal like starts like in 1999, right? It yeah. merges with uh, X, which is uh, Elon's company um, in 2000. Yep. That's like the modern yep. PayPal. And then they're go, yep. they're fighting. Um, they're fighting. They go the IPO. And then within uh, by 2002, they're sold to eBay. Right. So three yeah. years, every the whole the entire and, and really from, really the the, the 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 key pieces of it are two years, right? So it's basically two years from February of 2000 to February of 2002 when they go public, and that's like like a lifetime's worth of experience happens in those two years, right? Yeah. Um, and by the way, and September 11th happens uh, smack in the middle of the of that period as well. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's a lot going on, uh, you know, historically and uh, uh, so on. Yeah. So like for somebody like me, like I'm used to reading, you know, about like, uh, you know, po uh, politics, history, sort of people in government. And, you know, you hear about like they want to reform a system, you know, maybe it happens in 20, 30 years, right? I was just impressed by uh, I was just impressed by the extent to which, you know, these people just got things done and there was no playbook. I mean, they were operating under, I mean, everything, like, it seems like everything was sort of like of questionable legality. Like, are they a bank? <laughs> like, are, you know, can they deal with like, uh, uh, you know, can they deal with, um, you know, gambling the, and these other things, you know, like it seemed like everything was sort of a legal gray zone and you just, I'm just amazed by sort of what people in business, I mean, have to the, the hoops they have to jump jump through, and then like how they're still able to just plow forward and and actually do stuff. I mean, was that something that sort of drew you to the story? Yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's what I would describe as like a propulsive energy, right? That that emerges in several places. It emerged in my interviews with the participants who spoke about just how brutally hard this experience was. There was an engineer who described to me. He said, you know. I was so sleep deprived that I totaled two cars driving home from yeah. the office back home. He had a long commute. Yeah. Well, and, Elon, Elon and, and uh, Peter almost, uh, almost, uh, they, they almost had a fatal crash, right? Right. That that was that, that wasn't was not, uh, that, that was wasn't from exhaustion. Uh, yeah. that, was a sleep <laughs> that was different. That was just a car that's a lot to handle. Like the McLaren's an impressive piece of engineering, but right. it's a lot to, it's a lot harder to drive than people think. Um, the the but the 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 level of like the the kind of kinetic energy in the place is palpable. I would say it was also palpable in the, like I had some, somebody had shared a bunch of emails and they shared these newsletters, like the weekly newsletters that were internal to the company. And you, you can get it when you read these documents, you're like, every week feels like everything's on the line. Right. And that the next week could be the day that they, uh, that they go under. There's this website at the time, um, Pardon the French, but it was called fuckedcompany.com. And what it was doing was it was cataloging all of the like epic failures from the 2000s and the dot com bubble bursting. And I had an employee tell me they were they they were like every like, couple of days we would just like go on to fucked company to see if we were on there. Like we all sort of thought like eh, at some point that might happen to us, right? So it's it's a very like it's the whole company is a close shave and. I, I did, but I also found that like, like you, it's sort of the success in spite of that. And then the success where everything is an unanswered question, meaning there's nothing that they could go and, and like Google, right? Like, like look up answers to X. Everything is having to be invented as they're facing it, which is a very different style of operating than any work I had seen. And I, obviously I came as an outsider here. I'm not of Silicon Valley. I don't work in a tech company. 
I think it would this will feel natural to people who are in like, let's say, besieged, underfunded startups right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what this was. This was, you know, depending on your where you're measuring, two to four years of very intense building against many odds, against regulatory hurdles, against internal complicated dynamics, against technological limitations. You know, we were on dial-up internet back in the day. And I remember like having, you know, games with friends interrupted because my parents needed to make a phone call, right? But they were running a business where that was a reality for them. They had to manage around that reality. So I, I, I'm glad the, the, the intensity of it came through because it's a huge part of the shaping experience of this. Yeah. And, um, you know, looking back, the people looking back, it seems that from my impression from the book was uh, Elon Musk looks back and says, you know, it could have been much bigger. He's sort of disappointed. The original vision was him was sort of to consolidate everyone's finances into one place. That was sort of the X, uh, X dream, um, X his company. Um, and everyone else seems like, you know, they, they, they did it and then they sort of moved on to other things. Did, did you get that? Uh, did you get the impression that Musk was sort of just unique in his sort of regret that it didn't go, it didn't go reach its full potential? You know, I think there were others who expressed the regret. Luke Nosick expressed the regret, actually, and he was on the other side. He was on the Confinity side, which is the company that creates the product PayPal that ends up like actually becoming the full company. Luke says, you know, at one point he says, if this was the revolution, would we have sold it? And he's he's a big believer in the idea that part of PayPal's abiding mission was to overthrow currencies, to stop currency manipulation around the world. They had come, you know, we're, we're in the hangover during 1997, 8, 9, of the uh, Asian financial crises, they had seen currencies like fl- fluctuate like crazy. And part of Luke's, you know, impetus is like, well, that seems unfair for the people in those countries. Um, so there's a few other people that have the regret. I would say the regret is felt most profoundly by Elon. But to your to your point, you know, it, he also went on to do other things, right? Mo- the, the, the other things that we know him for today. And I had multiple people tell me they said, you know, and and he himself said. It's hard to argue with the eventual outcome, which was positive, <laughs> right? sort of like understatement of the century in some sense. Um, but other people said, you know, it, this freed him to do electrical energy in cars and it freed him to do, you know, space transportation, logistics and exploration. And there's a, de- you know, he himself admitted to me in a sort of passing moment. He said, you know, it's, it's possible that if I hadn't been ousted or if the, things had gone differently, that I could still be there today, just like grinding away, trying to like make this vision a reality. Um, I, I, you know, in some sense, I suppose it's it's a it's a good thing for the world that these entrepreneurs didn't just sort of stay with this company for you know three or three two to three or three decades, because you know we have so many things today that they built or did or achieved. They've also built a template for not doing kind of one thing, but going and doing it again, right? So the sort of repeater serial entrepreneur, um, I, I that you know that they'd have a harder time if they were all still at PayPal, like you know, turning a public company into like a slightly bigger public company. I see. So you think you think that idea of sort of serial entrepreneur, somebody makes a big company, then goes around and sort of sits on boards and becomes a venture capitalist. You, you think that that you think the people at PayPal they sort of pioneered that model, and we would we wouldn't even think of sort of entrepreneurs maybe in that in that sense if if that didn't happen. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I would let me let me add, add a disclaimer because I'm not. I don't know that I would go that far. You know that that model exists. It predates them, right? Meaning there are people who start multiple companies or ventures. I think that the difference is that there's a couple of things that come out of it. One is all of them have a healthy respect and admiration for the founding period of something. Like the, the, all of them, at one point or another, sort of meditated, like re- shared reflections about the the idea of a founder, about this sort of what what Peter Thiel has called the zero to one. But the idea of like actually scratching out something new in the world, and that the person who does that is a creative force. Now, for my purposes, I expanded the definition of founders here to include people on the cover, the front cover, and the back cover who didn't get their due, but who I regarded as like just as like just as worthy of that title as anyone. But you know. I would say that it, it, it gave them a real respect and almost like a reverence for anyone who founds anything. Like meaning like the act yeah. of creating something new is something to be celebrated by this group of people. I would say the other part of it is, you know, I had heard a friend speak about this uh, on, a, on a different podcast. You know, they made this cool. <laughs> like, yeah. like they made this sort of creativity, this kind of creation, something to aspire to, right? Um I, I, I have a young daughter and she we live on a on a block with other kids. And 
these two boys who live a few doors down from me speak about Elon Musk the way in the tones that I suspect people in the 50s and 60s spoke of yeah. like the first set of astronauts, yeah, right? That's and cool. and yeah. I know there's cynicism in business and I know there's reasons that people will be for or against different things he has said and done. But you cannot actually deny the 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 fact that like children know his name and see him as someone to aspire to. Um, I I hope that there's like a that there's room enough in American public life to celebrate that, and I think we ought to. But it suggests something about this group of entrepreneurs that's di- qualitatively different, let's say, than a than a um, you know, than somebody you know from like like a Jack Welch, <laughs> like, like like Joey and Dan from next door are never gonna like be like I really want to be like Jack Welch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>